Now remember, this is the formula that we decided on earlier. The decays per second is proportional to the number of nucleuses that are left. If you think about it, this is a rate law. Okay. Right? Radioactive decay is a type of reaction, and this is telling us the rate law for that reaction. It's telling us what rate is happening at. So the activity is basically just the rate. Okay. Well, is this first order, second order, or zeroth order rate law? Uh, first order. That's right. Why? Because the exponent here is a 1. It turns out that uh, this is first order in the number of nucleuses. Okay. Well, now we can talk about the integrated rate laws. You and I haven't talked about integrated rate laws, but your instructor went over that, and maybe you watched the videos on integrated rate laws. Remember that an integrated rate law connects the amount of substance and time. The integrated rate law connects the amount of substance and time. This is an ordinary rate law because it, it connects the rate with the amount. But if you're connect, connecting the amount with time, that's called an integrated rate law. Uh, and in that video series, you saw that um, there's, uh, you just kind of memorize that there's a certain type of integrated rate law for a zeroth order reaction. There's a certain type of rate law for a first order reaction and a certain type for a second order. What you saw is that for a first order reaction, first order reactions have integrated rate laws that look like this. Uh, maybe I shouldn't use A here. I should use, uh, I don't know, because it stands for something different. I'll use, I don't know, B for the amount of the substance. Okay. okay. So we can apply that here. We can say that the natural log, uh, and we won't use concentrations here, we'll use amounts. Natural log of the amount that's left equals negative KT plus the natural log of the original amount, using the idea of first order integrated rate laws. So this is the differential rate law for radioactive decay. This would be the integrated rate law. Okay. This is the first order. And we're only, we're only going to have to deal with first orders here, because radioactive decay is always a first order reaction. In the kinetics chapter, you have to deal with other orders. But in this chapter, we're just dealing with first order. Now, um, let's move the natu this natural log to the left. Mm -hmm. We can move this natural log to the left by subtracting it from both sides. So I've moved this to the left by subtracting it from both sides. How can we now simplify the left side of this equation, or how can we rewrite the left side of this equation? We can take ln outside of the parentheses, and inside of parentheses will be n minus n mu. No? I think you're thinking of factoring out the ln, but the ln isn't being multiplied by times n, so this is not a common factor that we can factor out. So we can't just use factoring here. Yeah, that's right. So this is a convenient topic to go over now, because when we were working on kinetics, we did a review of all the algebra and arithmetic for logarithms. So you need to use some of the logarithm math that we went over for the kinetics chapter. What, what can we do with the, the, this logarith these logarithms to rewrite them? Um, it's going to be ln n divided by n o. That's right. We saw that the difference of logs is the log of the quotient. And this is a handier way to write that equation. Now maybe I should put in a parenthesis. All right, this is a key equation for solving problems. You'll probably use this equation most of the time for solving these problems. Um, so it's good to see how it came from here. Um, okay. All right, but usually you'll just look this up. or have, I guess, do you have to have your equations memorized, or he gives you the equation? I think we, we're going to have actually a cheat sheet, because All right. he gives these, um, I mean, he gave us this, so I guess okay. we're going to be able to use it in the end. Because, I mean, we won't be able to memorize all of them. And the, the, the 
these include all the white chapters for these right. okay. exams. Okay. In any case, this is a key equation. Yeah. All right. So, um, by the way, so what does what what does uh, N zero stand for? It's the number we start like the number of what? How many how many numbers of nuclei right. original nuclei we were Yeah. How many nucleuses we originally started with? And then what does T stand for? Time. Yeah, the amount of time that's passed since the start. Mm -hmm. So this stands for time zero. And what does this N stand for? It's uh, how many nuclei we lost. Now it's the same N as we have in this graph. No, it's a, this, in, for example, in the problem, it, uh, the half of the original one. Yeah? Uh, let's see. The half amount of, uh, of the... Um, this stand, we've been using capital N to stand for the number of nuclei that are left. Okay. N stands, capital N stands for the number of nuclei that are left. In the integrated rate law, when we take the natural log of this amount, this is the amount of the substance that's left. Um, so this stands for the amount that's left. Um, we haven't really invented a symbol for the amount that's gone. All right. Um, so this is the same n as we have in this graph. And in the graph, we were graphing how many are left, not how many are gone. Notice that as time goes on, almost none of them are left. Yeah. All right, so capital N stands for how many nucleuses are left after time t has passed. After time t, capital N is how many nucleuses have left. I'm sorry, how many nucleuses, and I'm just thinking now, capital N is how many nucleuses we have left. Capital N is how many nucleuses remain. Capital N is how many nucleuses remain after time t. Okay. This is how many nucleuses are remaining, and this is how many nucleuses we started with. So how could you figure out how many nucleuses you've lost? If, this, if you know how many you started with and you know this, yeah, if you subtract them, that would tell you how many you have lost. So you can't figure out how many you've lost directly from this equation. But if you work through the equation, you can get these two numbers and figure out how many you've lost. Very good. All right, so again, this is a key equation. And k, again, is the decay constant. It tells us the percent decay per second. Um, this doesn't change over time. This is a constant for any particular type of nucleus. All right, so now let's see. Um, yeah, so continuing to talk about this, note that this now tells us the ratio of how many nucleuses we have left to what we started with. Mm -hmm. So for example, this might be one quarter. If this was one quarter, what would that mean? It means, it means that we have one quarter of the original nucleuses left. We, uh, we, we only have one quarter of the nucleuses we started with. Only 25% of the original nucleuses are left. So sometimes they're not even going to tell you n and n0. Sometimes they'll just tell you um, you have 25% of the nucleuses left. And then you can just plug in 25% here, even if you don't know the numerator and denominator separately. Even, so we don't need to know the numerator and denominator separately here. All we need to know is this fraction in order to okay. use this equation. If you know the fraction, it doesn't matter what the individual top and bottom are. Okay. All right. Uh, how can, uh, can you repeat the question? How can some, I mean, how do you repeat the question for this, like, how many, the ratio of a... Uh... This tells us, um, this, uh, so this tells us the ratio of the nucleuses that are left to what we started. Mm -hmm. So it tells us what fraction of the original nucleuses we still have left. It okay. tells us what fraction or percentage of the original nucleuses are still remaining. So for example, if this, I just made up the number one quarter, but yeah, if yeah. this ratio was one quarter, that would mean that we still have one quarter of the original nucleuses that haven't decayed yet. Okay. So in that case, how many, what, what fraction of the nucleuses have decayed? Um, it's going to be 9 over 4. 
if one quarter of the nucleuses um, are still left, then what fraction of the nucleuses have decayed? How, what fraction have we lost? The rest of the fraction, 75%. Which is 75%. Like 75%. Yeah, what would that be as a fraction? Uh, three over four. Okay, yeah, that's right. I, I, I didn't hear you say that before. Okay, that's right. So if the fraction that's left is one quarter, then the fraction um, that, has, uh, that we've lost is three quarters. Okay. Or if the percent that's remaining is 25%, then the percent that has decayed would be 75%. Mm -hmm. Okay.